Hi guys, welcome back. It's chapter three of Mr. Stink. It's called The Wanderer. Mr. Stink ate the sausages in an unexpectedly elegant manner. First, he took out a little linen napkin and tucked it under his chin. Next, he took an antique silver knife and fork out of his breast pocket. Finally, he produced a dirty gold rimmed china plate, which he gave to the Duchess to lick clean before he set down the sausages on it. Chloe stared at his cutlery and plate. This seemed like another clue to his past. He had perhaps been a gentleman thief who crept into country houses at midnight and made off with the family silver. Do you have any more sausages? said Mr Stink. No, just those eight I'm afraid, said Chloe. She stood a safe distance from the tramp so that her eyes wouldn't start weeping at the smell. The Duchess looked up at Mr Stink as he ate the sausages with a heartbreaking longing that suggested that all the love and all the beauty was contained in those two tubes of meat. There you go, Duchess, said Mr Stink, slowly lowering half a sausage into the dog's mouth. The Duchess was so hungry, she didn't even chew. She just swallowed it in a millisecond before returning to her expression of sausage longing. Had any man or beast ever eaten a sausage so quickly. Chloe was half expecting a gentleman in a blazer and snacks with a clipboard and stopwatch to appear and declare the little black dog had set a new sausage eating international world record. So, young Chloe, is everything fine at home? He let the Duchess lick her fingers clean. I I'm sorry, said a befuddled Chloe. I asked if everything was fine at home, if things were tickety-boo. I'm not sure you'd be spending your Sunday talking to an old vagabond like me. Vagabond? I don't like the word tramp. It makes you think of someone who smells. <coughs> Chloe tried to conceal her surprise. Even the Duchess looked puzzled and she didn't speak English. Only dog. I prefer vagabond or wanderer, continued Mr Stink. The way he put it, thought Chloe, it sounded almost poetic. Especially wanderer. She'd love to be a wanderer. She would wander all around the world if she could, not stay in this boring little town where nothing happened. There's nothing wrong at home. Everything is fine, said Chloe. Are you sure? Said Mr Stink, with the wisdom some people have that cuts right through you like a knife of butter knife through butter. Things were in fact not at all fine at home for Chloe. She was often ignored. Her mother doted on Annabelle probably because her youngest daughter was like a miniature version of her. Every inch of every wall in the house was covered with celebrations of animal Annabelle's achievements. Photographs of her standing smugly on winners podiums. Certificates bearing her name emblazoned in italic gold. Trophies, statuettes, medals engraved with winner, first place. Or little creep. Made the last one up. The more Annabelle achieved, the more Chloe felt like a failure. Her parents spent most of their lives providing a chauffeur driven service for Annabelle's out of school activities. Her schedule was exhausting even to just look at. Monday. 5am swimming, 6am clarinet, 7am dance lesson, tap and contemporary jazz, 8am dance lesson, 9am to 4pm school, 4pm drama lesson, improvisation and movement, 5pm piano lesson, 6pm brownies, 7pm girls brigade, 8pm javelin practice, Tuesday, 4am violin lesson, 5am still walking practice, 6am chess society, 7am learning Japanese, 8am flower arranging, 9 till 4 school, 4pm creative writing, 5pm porcelain frog painting class, 6pm heart practice, 7pm watercolour painting class, 8pm dance class, ballroom, Wednesday 3am choir practice, 4am long jump training, 5am high jump training, 6am long jump training again, 7am trombone lesson, 8am scuba diving, 
9 till 4, school. 4 p.m. chef training. 5 p.m. mountain climbing. 6 p.m. tennis. 7 p.m. drama workshop. 8 p.m. show jumping. Thursday, 2 a.m. learning Arabic. 3 a.m. dance lessons, break dancing and hip hop. 4 a.m. oboe lesson, 5 a.m. Tour de France training, 6 a.m. Bible study, 7 a.m. gymnastics training, 8 a.m. calligraphy class, 9 a.m. school, 4 p.m. work experience, shadowing the brain surgeon, 5 p.m. opera singing, 6 p.m. NASA space exploration workshop, 7 p.m. cake baking, 8 p.m. attend the lecture, Friday, 1 a.m. triangle lesson, 2 a.m. badminton, 3am archery, 4am fly to Switzerland for quick ski jump practice, learn about eggs from an expert on eggs, 6am do quick ski jump training, 8am Thai kickboxing, 9am to 4pm school, 4pm <coughs> channel swimming training, 5pm motorbike maintenance, 6pm candle making, 7pm otter rearing class, 8pm television viewing, a choice between documentaries or Polish cartoon from the 20s. And that was just the weekdays. The weekends were when things really got busy for Annabelle. No wonder Chloe felt ignored. Well, I suppose things at home are... are uh, Chloe stammered. She wanted to talk to him about it all, but she wasn't sure how. Bong, 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 bong! No, sorry, sorry, listen, I haven't lost my mind. That was meant to be the church clock striking four. Chloe gasped and looked at her watch. <gasps> four o'clock? Mother made her do her homework from four till six every day, even in the school holidays, when she didn't have to do anything. Sorry, Mr. Drink, I've got to go. Secretly, Chloe was relieved. No one had ever asked her about how she felt before, and she was beginning to panic. Really, child? said the old man, looking disappointed. Yes, yes, I need to get home. Mother will be furious if I don't get at least a C in maths next term. She sent me extra tests during the holidays. That doesn't sound much like a holiday to me, said Mr Stink. Chloe shrugged. Mother doesn't believe in holidays. I hope you liked your sausages. They were scrumptious, said Mr Stink. Thank you. Unimaginable kindness. Chloe nodded and turned to run off towards home. If she took a shortcut cut. She'd be back before mum. Farewell, farewell Mr Stink, she called. It's chapter four, Mr Stink, and this is called Drivel. Terrified of being late for homework hour, Chloe began to quicken her pace. She didn't want her mum to ask her questions about where she'd been or who she'd been talking to. Mrs Crumb would be horrified to find out her daughter had been sitting on a bench with someone she'd describe as a soap dodger. Grown-ups always have a way of ruining everything. Chloe stopped hurrying. Then she saw that she was about to pass Roger's shop. Just one chocolate bar, she thought. Chloe's love of chocolate made her one of Raj's best customers. Raj ran the local news agent shop. He was a big, jolly jelly of a man. As sweet, colourful as his slightly overpriced confectionery. Today, though, what Chloe really needed was some advice. And maybe some chocolate. Just one bar. Or maybe two. Ah, Miss Chloe, said Raj as she entered the shop. What can I tempt you with today? Hello, Raj, said Chloe, smiling. She always smiled when she saw Raj. It was partly because he was such a lovely man and partly because he sold sweets. I have some Rolos on special offer, announced Raj. They've gone out of date and hardened. You may lose a tooth as you chew into one, but a 10p off, you really can't argue. Hmm, let me think, said Chloe, scouring the racks and racks of confectionery. Hmm, I had half a lion bar earlier. You're welcome to make me an offer for the other half. I'll take anything upwards of 15p. Um, I think I'll just take a crunchy, please, Raj. Buy seven crunchy bars and you get the eighth crunchy bar absolutely free. No thanks, Raj, I only want one. She put the money down on the counter, 35p. Money well spent, considering the nice feeling the chocolate would give her as it slipped down her throat and into her tummy. But Chloe, don't you understand? 
This is a unique opportunity to enjoy the popular chocolate-covered honeycomb bar at a dramatic saving. But I don't need eight crunchy bars, Raj, said Chloe. I need some advice. I don't think I'm really responsible enough to give out advice, said Raj. But I'll try. Chloe loved talking to Raj. He wasn't a parent or a teacher, and whatever you said to him, he'd never, ever judge you. However, Chloe still gulped slightly because she was about to attempt another little lie. Well, um, there's this little girl that I know at school. Yeah, a girl at school, not you. Uh, oh, no, 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 <laughs> somebody else. Right, said Raj. Mm. Chloe gulped again and looked down, unable to meet his gaze. Well, um, <clears throat> this um, friend of mine, she started talking to this tramp and she really likes talking to him, but her mum would blow a fuse if she knew. So, I mean, I, sorry, <laughs> my friend doesn't know what to do. Raj looked at Chloe expectantly. Yeah, he said. And what's your question? Well, Raj, said Chloe, do you think it's wrong to talk to tramps? Well, it's not very good talking to strangers, said Raj. And you should never, ever let anyone you don't know give you a lift in a car. Right, said Chloe, disappointed. But a tramp is just somebody without a home, said Raj. Too many people walk on by and pretend they're not there. Yes, yes, said Chloe. That's what I think too. Raj smiled. Any of us could become homeless one day. I can see nothing wrong with talking to a tramp, just like you'd talk to anyone else. Thanks, Raj. I'll, I'll, I mean, sorry, I'll uh, tell her. You know, the girl at school. <laughs> What's the girl's name? Um, Stephen, I mean, uh, Susan, uh, sorry, Sarah. Her name's Sarah, it's definitely Sarah. It's you, isn't it? Said Raj. Yeah, said Chloe. You are a very sweet girl, Chloe. It's lovely that you've taken the time to talk to a tramp. There, but for the grace of God, go you and I. Thanks, Raj. Chloe went a little red, embarrassed by the compliment. Now, what can you buy your homeless friend for Christmas? Said Raj as he scowled around his disorganised shop. Have a box full of Teenage Mutant Ninja T Turtle stationery sets that can't seem to shift them. Yours for only three ninety nine. In fact, buy one and I'll give you one free. I'm not sure a tramp really had any need for a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stationery set. Thanks anyway, Raj. We'll all have use of a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle st stationery set, Chloe. You have your Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles pencil. You have your Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles eraser. You have your Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles ruler. Your Teenage Mutant Nindles, Ninja Turtles pencil case. Your Teenage Mutant... Great, 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 great idea, Raj. But I'm sorry, I'm not going to buy one. I've got to go, said Chloe, edging out the corner shop as she unwrapped the crunchy. I haven't finished, Chloe, please. I haven't sold one. You also have your Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles pencil sharpener. Your Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles notepad. Your Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles... Oh... She's gone. And what's this, young lady? Demanded mother. She was standing waiting in Chloe's room. Between her thumb and her index finger was one of Chloe's exercise books from school. Mother held it as if it was an exhibit in a court case. It's just one of my maths books, Mum, she said. Mm. Well, you might think that Chloe was worried because her maths wasn't up to scratch, but that wasn't quite it. The problem was... Chloe's maths book didn't have any maths in it. The book was supposed to be full of boring old numbers and equations, but instead it was positively overflowing with colourful words and pictures. Spending so much time alone had turned Chloe's imagination into a deep dark forest. It was a magical place to escape to, and so much more thrilling than real life. Chloe had used the exercise book to write a story about a girl who was sent into school, loosely based on her own where all the teachers are secret vampires. She thought it was much more exciting than boring equations, but Mother clearly didn't agree. If it is your mathematics book, why does it contain this repulsive horror story? 
said Mother. This was one of those questions when you aren't supposed to give an answer. No wonder you did so poorly in your mathematics exam. I imagine you have spent time in class writing this, this drivel. I'm so disappointed in you, Chloe. Chloe felt her cheeks smarting with shame and hung her head. She didn't think her story was drivel, but she couldn't imagine telling her mother that. Don't you have anything to say for yourself, said mother. Chloe shook her head. For the second time in one day, she just wanted to disappear. Well, this is what I think of your story, said mother, as she started trying to rip up the ex exercise book. Please, please don't, said Chloe. No, 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 no. I'm not paying your school fees for you to waste your time on this rubbish. It's going straight in the bin. The book was obviously harder to rip than mother had expected and it took a few attempts to make her first turn. However, soon the book was nothing more than confetti. Chloe bowed her head, tears welling up in her eyes as her mother dropped all the pieces in the bin. Do you want to end up like your father, working in a car factory? If you concentrate on your maths and don't get distracted by silly stories, you have a chance of making a better life for yourself. Otherwise, you'll end up wasting your life like your father. Is that what you want? Well, I... How dare you interrupt me, shouted Mother. Chloe hadn't realised this was another one of those questions you're not actually meant to answer. You better book your ideas up, young lady. Chloe wasn't quite sure what she meant, but it did seem like the best time to ask. Mother left the room, dramatically slamming the door behind her. Chloe sat down on the edge of her bed. As she buried her face in her hand, she thought of Mr. Stink, sitting on his bench with only the Duchess for company. She wasn't homeless like him, but she felt homeless in her heart. Join me soon for chapter five.